You bought the rotary, created some logos, and now you're ready to tackle full wraps, but you're not entirely sure what the steps are to achieve it. Well, that's what we're going to do in our workshop today. Hi, I'm Katie Devlin of Things Katie Makes, and in this workshop, we will cover what is a full wrap? Things to think about when creating or using designs for your tumblers, how to set up your tests and your designs in Lightburn, and the best Lightburn tools to use for effective execution, which include tool layers, cut selected graphics, and grid array. Here are the things you'll need to follow along. A rotary of your choice, a powder coated tumbler, a full wrap design or SVGs to place into a blank template, calipers or a measuring tape, a level that can sit on the tumbler, painter's tape, and a focal measurement tool. After this workshop, you'll be ready to start tackling this popular design style to make it yours. So what is a full wrap and why is it so complex? When I talk about a full wrap design, I'm thinking of a design that goes fully around the cup and you can't tell where it begins and ends. They can be simple or complex, tightly grouped or loose, but they will all require similar steps to ensure they come out the way you expect. While these are a very popular style, they can be intimidating to start. Here are some of the things that might trip you up. First, the laser doesn't know that it's working on a curved surface that is turning around, so you'll need to compensate for that. Focus can be a challenge. Getting the right focal distance is a bit trickier working with a curved surface and potentially tapers or stacked cups. Tumblers aren't typically a cheap material to test or make mistakes on, so I would plan to have at least a couple of test options available to help you gain confidence. Even if it is just making personal cups for friends and family, practice is key here. I also recommend running your first pass of a new complex design as a light engraving on painter's tape to make sure your setup looks good. You can run at a very high speed and low power and get a really good sense of what your design looks like without the commitment. So now that you know what we're diving into, let's talk in a little more detail about the things you'll need to create this popular style. First, you'll need a laser that can handle a rotary and the type of cup you're tackling. If you want to remove powder coating, you'll need a CO2 or a diode laser. If you're tackling glass, you might want to work with a UV for best results. Second, you'll want your rotary of choice. For full wraps, I recommend a chuck style rotary. This will allow you to fix any mistakes as the cup always starts and ends in the same place on a chuck rotary. While you can complete full wraps on a roller, I just be very mindful about the design that you want to try to execute. Third, you'll need your tumbler of choice. And there are levels of complexity with each style of cup. Here's the levels as I think about them. Easy, a straight sided tumbler, no dealing with different focus levels or odd distortions for tapers. Intermediate, a tapered tumbler, You'll need to ensure you're in focus at multiple distances from your laser beam and have some distortions at the taper. Hard. Step downs. Dramatic differences in circumference make it more challenging to get all your measurements and focus right in addition to distorting your designs. And finally, you'll want the other supplies mentioned earlier in the video. Let's head over to Lightburn to start our rotary setup. Before running your first rotary job, you'll need to open the rotary setup window to establish some important values and enable rotary mode. Steps per rotation, or millimeters per rotation if you're using a G-code based device, is the number of motor steps required to turn your rotary 360 degrees. In most cases, this value will be provided by the manufacturer of your rotary or your machine. You can use the test button to verify these steps. When the value is correct, pressing the test button will cause your rotary to make one complete rotation, then return to the start. Once this value is set correctly, you should never need to change it again. If you're working with a chuck style rotary, you will also need to enter the circumference of the object you're placing in your rotary so Lightburn knows how to scale your output properly. For a roller style rotary, object circumference doesn't affect output scaling. You can use seamstress tape to wrap around the tumbler and measure the circumference, or use calipers to measure the diameter. 
Lightburn will automatically calculate circumference for you based off that value. Now that we've completed that rotary setup, we get to start the fun part. It's design time. If you are a designer and want to create your SVGs from scratch, amazing. You can absolutely do that. But if you're not, let's talk about what to look for in the design you want to use. Similar to the cup difficulty levels, we'll define three levels of design complexity for full wraps. Easy. Very loose designs, no overlap. The design doesn't have any chance to crash into each other, so you'll have loads of room for error. No shapes that will look obviously crazy when they're squished. And no seamless patterns. Seamless patterns are designed as squares, so it's getting them to match up on the left and right of your rectangle while also fitting properly top to bottom can be a frustrating exercise. While you might be able to get the left and the right to match, then the sizing won't work top to bottom and you can't match that up. If you were looking for an easy design, I'd avoid seamless patterns. Intermediate, still loose designs, but with a potential for overlap. Shapes you might want to keep the same as it will be obvious they are distorted. Think squares and circles. Logos to work around. Complex, narrow margin of error, straight lines, tight wrap, seamless patterns. I always recommend starting with an easy design to gain confidence and a comfort level with full wraps. Once you know that your designs start and finish exactly where you expect them, you can move on to more complex ones. For our design today, we are going to start by making a template for our tumbler and then add illustrations we want to engrave. We'll focus on the easy style with a touch of intermediate as we'll be designing around a logo. Here's a hot tip. If you don't want to build your design around the logo, you can use aluminum tape to cover it if you are engraving with a CO2 like I am. It won't penetrate it. I like to incorporate the logo into the design though, just to make sure that I like the way everything looks. First, measure your tumbler for the full area you want to engrave. In addition to the circumference measurement you took earlier, you'll need to measure the length of the cup. For our example today, we're tackling this skinny travel coffee mug and it measures 217 millimeters in the circumference by 200 millimeters in the length of the cup. So I'll create my rectangle in that size. I typically will work on the design with it facing me the way I would see it. Then when it is designed as I like it, I'll turn it the appropriate direction for the rotary. In the final orientation, the rectangle's height will match the cup's circumference and its width will match the cup's length. Two quick tips here. First, I've gotten in the habit of measuring in millimeters as that is how I run my Lightburn setup. But if you measure in inches, you can always enter that value and let Lightburn do the math for you. Second, create this rectangle on a tool layer. Tool layers are guides that will never be output to the laser. And since this rectangle is simply a guideline, no need to risk having it engraved when you don't want it to. Next, I'd run a quick painter's tape test on my cup to make sure my rectangle size is correct. While my measurement may be accurate, the combination of steps for rotation and focal distance can make it so that I need to adjust the width slightly. To execute this test, I'll create a skinny rectangle the full width of the template. Then I'll turn that 90 degrees, the appropriate direction for your rotary setup, and engrave that lightly in the center of my cup using painter's tape. If the ends of my rectangle overlap, I'll decrease the size of the template, and if I have a gap, I'll increase it until I'm confident my design will be seamless. This is typically a process of trial and error, but once you get a template set for a specific tumbler style, you can use it over and over. And lastly for my template, I need to set up the box outlining the logo so I can design around it. I'll place that in the center of the rectangle at the appropriate distance down from the top of the engraving area on the cup. Now we're ready to place our elements into our design. I'm using these fun hand-drawn doodles and I'm going to use the grid array tool to get them to look like a seamless design. I'll start the design and once I have a grouping I like, I'll use array tools to pattern it. In this case, I'm repeating it three times to fit across the width of the tumbler. I'm also using a specific gap between those repetitions to make sure that it looks seamless when it's all complete. I'm using one layer for all of these designs as I will engrave them all with the same speed and power. 
Once I've placed them and I'm happy with the design, I like to check what my seam will look like. To do this, I'll group all the items on the design and make a copy. I'll then snap that to the edge of the design and see if I'm left with a really obvious seam. If I don't like the way it looks, I'll adjust the items until it looks good as I align them. Now that my design is ready, it's time to get the rotary set up and frame the logo to make sure my engraving will land where I want. I'll rotate the design 90 degrees and set my origin to the center of the design at the top of the cup. Here's a trick that will make a huge difference in your confidence when setting up your designs. Similarly to how we tested to make sure our template was the right size, we also want to test that our logo box is placed appropriately in our template and aligned correctly with where we set our origin in the laser. This is an important step if you design around the logo like I prefer to do. With this step, we want to frame only the logo using the box we created in our template. First, I'll set my user origin in my laser, aligning the origin to the center of the logo, and then I'll move the laser head to the top of the engravable area on the tumbler. Then I'll push the origin button to make sure that that's set. Then I'll head over to Lightburn and turn on Cut Selected Graphics. Next, I'll select only the logo box. Because I did not use the selection origin, you can see that the origin is set in the center of the tool layer that defines the outside of my template. We can now use the frame button to draw our outline around the logo. We can then adjust our origin in the laser until we get a perfect box drawn around our logo. Once that is set, I know my origin is good. I'll then turn that box off for our output or move it to a tool layer. One thing to note prior to running this test, you want to make sure your tumbler is level and your laser is focused at the appropriate distance for your setup. Get level first, then measure your focal distance. The laser I'm using has a touch probe and calculates an autofocus, but on another of my CO2 gantry lasers, I'll measure six millimeters from the laser head to the top of the tumbler in about the center of the engraving area. Now we're ready to engrave our tumbler. I'll set my speed, power, and lines per inch based on tests I've completed on other tumblers. You'll need to find the best values for your laser by getting a starting point from your laser manufacturer and running material tests. I'll send just the engraving layer and the tool layer to the laser now, frame first, then run it. Once the engraving is complete, I'll take a quick look to make sure it looks like I got through all the powder coating prior to removing it from the rotary. With a chuck style rotary, I can run a second pass if needed to clean up any spots before I take it off. After I take it off, it's a quick spray with something like LA Awesome or Endura Mark Blue and a scrub with a magic eraser to clean up remaining powder coat residue and we've got a great looking tumbler. Now you know the process for setting up and creating your own full wrap tumblers. Using the steps outlined in this video along with some practice, you'll be up and running in no time. Be sure to like and subscribe for more Lightburn Workshop videos.